Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to talk about this perfume house, Panouche Paris. I learned about this perfume house from Holly Go Lightly and purchased the Discover set last year. And there was one fragrance here that I really wanted to add to my collection. And yesterday I was just going over my perfume samples and discovery sets and I chose to focus on Panouche Paris and I fell in love all over again with these fragrances. This is the very first one, Rose Agate. I think that's how you pronounce it. So this is obviously a rose fragrance, but this you guys is not just your typical rose fragrance because this is a metallic rose i wasn't really the biggest fan of this one when i first sampled this last year it was too metallic on my skin and these fragrances these samples from panouche paris they are super long lasting so anyway rose agate it has notes like metal accord as a top notes elemi and black pepper in the heart, it has rose oxide, rose geranium, and incense. And in the base, this has ebony wood, mineral accord, leather, and labdanum. And this belongs to the olfactive family woody floral. I was super excited to try this last year because, again, it was a rose fragrance. And you guys know that if I discover perfumes from a certain perfume house, I go for the rose perfumes to see, you know, how they interpret, you know, the rose scent. So this one surprisingly is not as metallic as how it was last year and I think I already smelled maybe a couple more metallic perfumes um, ever since so it's not really as shocking to me. In terms of the rose, it's a very fizzy kind of rose. It's not very green, it's not too floral as well but it's a very fizzy rose. I guess it's that rose oxide kind of note and I don't really get a lot of the other notes like black pepper or leather but all in all this is a very nice rose with that shock of metallic note in the entrance. This one, as it dries down, it becomes a mineral kind of rose scent. It takes quite a while for it to dry down and for the metallic notes to really fade. And honestly, I was super shocked when I tried this one again yesterday because it's a beautiful rose fragrance. Yes, the metallic notes is a shock to the system, to the senses, but it's really, really nice. Something worth trying. And the next one is Absinthe Guayac. So if I could guess, this is like Guayac Wood and Absinthe. This also was a very challenging scent to me so smelling these again i don't know they just smell different um right now it's very warm here in iceland it's eight degrees celsius i think i got these samples around spring summertime i'm not sure but i tried smelling them again during cooler season fall and winter but it was still too strong for me too metallic but i don't know maybe these fragrances they just bloom in warmer weather so so this one absinthe guayac belongs to the leather oriental um scent family it has notes like absinthe and violet leaf as the top notes it has rose leather and nutmeg in the middle and in the base this is amber Wood, musks, patchouli, and vetiver. So just looking at the notes, like based on how, you know, this rose agate fra fragrance was, it has, you know, leather as well. It has many notes that you wouldn't really expect in most fragrances. And I guess that's what makes, you know, this house or these fragrances from this house, from this collection, really interesting so because you experience different scents depending on how you're feeling, depending on the season. Like for this one right now, I get a lot of violet leaf. I don't really know how absinthe smells like. I I think I have other fragrances, if I'm not mistaken, that has absinthe. So I have to go over and look at those fragrances, maybe do an absinthe like fragrances video. So anyway, I get a lot of rose and violet leaf here. Um, a lot of nutmeg though. So now I'm interested to smell this one or try this one again during fall and winter. See if I get more of the leather and nutmeg. I don't really get a lot of leather, but I do get a lot of patchouli, musk, vetiver, and amber. So it's basically just violet leaf rose maybe that absinthe there is something in here that i smell that i'm not really familiar with and then musk patchouli amber and a hint of vetiver in the dry down but it's very warm it's spring going on to summer here in iceland so yeah this is really really nice i remember smelling this and i got something more of like a very sweaty kind of scent so i didn't really understand it that much but right now i really love this so let me know you guys have you tried other fragrances with notes like absinthe because I don't really know like how that scent smells like maybe it's green maybe it's something I don't know I'm not really so sure I know that Artemisia is something related to the whole scent of absinthe I'm not really so sure but yeah this one is really really good it's really fresh it's unique it's uplifting it's bright even though it has heavier notes like amber and vetiver and all of that a heavier musk base as well but it's a really bright scent and it really suits you know like spring summer weather so if you want something you know not your typical 
typical green floral fragrance, something with a unique twist, but nothing that's too adventurous and too out there, you know, as a niche perfume. This is really nice. Absinthe Quiet. And then the next one is, oh my gosh, like right now, look, smelling these fragrances, I am really in love with all of them i used to love only one like head over heels in love with one but now i'm loving every single one so the next one that we have here is patchouli fig so this one just you know looking at the name it's a patchouli and fig fragrance so this belongs to the fruity oriental family it has notes like fig leaves rhubarb and pear so really really nice in the heart we have fig milk and jasmine in the base it has patchouli cocoa amber and cedar so when i look at the name patchouli fig i am imagining something in the realm of maybe alluring fig by theodoros Scalatinis, green and sweet and maybe because it has fig something milky about it or something lactonic or creamy but it has no like for example rhubarb and pear it also has cocoa and amber so it's a very weird combination which is i think why i really love you know these fragrances this is a very creamy and milky patchouli and fig fragrance i know that's not really the most poetic kind of description but it is if you love your patchouli you really are gonna love this one this has that very typical green like almost like juicy kind of patchouli scent patchouli can sometimes be very dry it can be dusty it can also be chocolatey but here it's that green and almost fresh patchouli with that creamy fig fig here is almost milky something that's similar to how fig is in angel eau crocier that one also has fig and patchouli but it's a very very sweet fragrance here oh my god i love when i sprayed this yesterday i was like oh my goodness why do i love like every single one and this wasn't really one of the like ones that i really liked when i smelled this or when i had this sample set before and i get a lot of cocoa in here i didn't really expect to get that but then you know looking at the notes as i said patchouli can be a chocolatey kind of scent a chocolatey patchouli i guess that's how this one is here it's a fresh chocolatey patchouli with that milky fig really really beautiful i don't really get a lot of the other notes i don't get a lot of jasmine so i guess those are just the notes that i'm picking up more now that it's warmer here in iceland so it's amazing how these fragrances are like because when i look at the notes when i look at you know the note pyramid i would expect them to be more of a fall and winter scent but i guess wearing them during the warmer weather you know you get more of the fruity notes you get more of the lighter notes and it's not as heavy so this one you guys is really really beautiful patchouli fig again if you love your patchouli fragrances if you love milky fig scents this is really nice. It leans almost gourmand because of the cocoa and because of the whole scent profile of it being very smooth and milky. Really beautiful. Patchouli fig. And the last one. This one was the fragrance that I immediately fell in love with. This is Datura Amaretti. And when you look at the name, this is, yes, an almond fragrance with a Datura flower. This one belongs to the floral sheep gourmand category. It has notes like mandarin and cherry on top yes and in the heart this has datura and ylang ylang so those are the main florals in this fragrance in the base this says almond a biscuit accord musk and cedar what a beautiful combination of notes and it was you know like it was a no-brainer why i really love this fragrance i get that very distinct floral scent here that i guess is datura i have um datura noir by serge latance this one also has a very strong Datura um, note. It has tuberose and other florals as well. But I get something in here that I can't really describe, which is, I guess, the Datura flower because I also get it in this one here. Ylang Ylang is not really that strong. I know when Ylang Ylang is very strong in fragrances, I love that scent. But here, right now, now that it's warmer, I get a lot of Datura. The mandarin orange is just there, you know, in the beginning to give that very bright, um, fruity, citrusy entrance and it's all about the almond and the gourmand notes in here so almond together with cherry almond can have that very cherry like nuance and it's a very gourmand like almond because it is paired with the biscuit accord of course by the name the Tura Amaretti, it's your almond um, cookies with the Datura flower. I really expect to get a lot of gourmand notes in this fragrance given that it's warmer right now. I always expected it to, you know, blue more or to be more forward when it's fall and winter or when it's cooler. But apparently as it... But apparently in this fragrance... <laughs> 
but apparently in this fragrance, but apparently in this fragrance it blooms. But apparently in this fragrance I get it a lot more right now. I, again, it's a very straightforward scent. The tour of flowers, or it depends if you get more elang. Oh my God, the neighbors upstairs! I can't even. If you guys have been following me for quite a while now, I started filming videos 2020. We moved here five, six years ago. The neighbors upstairs are always, I don't know what they're doing. It's like endless construction. I don't know what. Okay, so this one is a very straightforward scent. The Tour of Flowers or Ilang Ilang depends on what you really get, but I get more the Tour here and your almond cookies. So almond is cherry-like. It has a cherry nuance, very gourmand, milky, really, really nice. You guys can see I use a lot. So anyway, they're samples. They're um, sample vials. I think they're 3 ml, so they're huge. And you get a lot of use with these fragrances or with these samples because as I said, they perform really, really well. They're very long lasting. When I got this Discover set last year, I was drawn to the Tour Amoretti. With how Holly Golightly described this one, I knew right away this is one of the fragrances that I would fall in love with and I immediately loved this one. Understandable because it's a floral gourmand. But smelling all four again a year later, it's so hard for me to choose. Like if I could rate, I would get the Tour Amoretti. I would put this one on first place. Patchouli Fig would be second. This is super milky and creamy, you guys. Again, if you love patchouli and fig fragrances, you definitely need to try this one. Get the Discovery set. And then I think I'm going to have to put Absinthe Guayac because it's a very unique fragrance. It's fresh and green and crisp, but then it has something else going on because, of course, it has patchouli, it has violet leaf, and it has heavier notes as well. So this would be number three. And surprisingly, a rose fragrance is the last one. Yes, it's a nice mineral um, rose and geranium scent, but right now I'm loving the metallic note in this fragrance. Um, not really that much that I want to get a full bottle of it right away. Like how I wish that this fragrance house, they offered smaller bottles, but they only have the samples and the 100 ml, and you guys know how I feel about big 100 ml bottles. But if I could get the full bottle, yes, I would get the Tour Amoretti, but I'm leaning so much to Patchouli Fig because this is a very unique fragrance. I love how lactonic the fig is here, and Absinthe Guayac is also like next in the line. So if I could get, I would get all three. But then rose agate would be, you know, lonely. But then, you know, I'm not going to be getting them right away because they're 107 euros for the 100 ml again. But yeah, these two, the Tura Amoretti and Patchouli Fig would be the very first ones that I would get. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I just wanted to talk about this perfume house, Branouge Paris. Thank you so much for watching today's video, you guys. Let me know which one of these you guys are more interested to try if you're interested to try the floral sheep gourmand in the tour amoretti or if you're excited to try patchouli and fig or or a unique absinthe fragrance because i don't have a lot of absinthe fragrances so leave some suggestions down below or this metallic mineral rose as i always say in every single video have fun much love stay safe and see you in the next one